Next up, let's create our contact page and our contact form. Now the contact page will be a component again. So let's go here and we'll open up a new terminal. NGG component contact. All right, so we have our contact component and let's make sure we can see it. So in app components, right above app home, I'm gonna say app dash contact. Now this isn't ideal, obviously, to have our app contact and our app home on the same exact page. So in a future lesson, we're gonna make sure that each of these are set to routing so that this only shows on slash contact for our route. And this only shows for the actual home page. But right now, since we're just testing these components, we're just gonna throw everything into app component and show them here. All right, let's start working on our contact form. We're gonna start with a hero section. We'll create a hero section at the top to add a title to. So we'll say section class is hero, is primary, is bold. And this is just from knowing the classes for so long. So we'll say div class hero body. div class container, and this makes sure it's not going left to right. It has a little bit of a padding on each side. H1 class is title contact us. All right, that looks good. Let's create a new section now. So that's our hero section for the title. We'll say section class is section. And instead of a hero, I'm just gonna use a section class. And that just gives simple padding instead of all these nice colorings div class container. And this is where our form goes. All right, let's start the form now. So we're gonna say form, and then we're gonna have a name, an email, and a message. And also the submit button. Now I want to talk about Angular forms real quick. Angular lets us build out forms very easily and it gives us two different ways to build them. One, we can build them what's called the template driven way. So here's one. One is the template driven way. And two is the reactive way. Now the reactive way is where you build out your form inside of your JavaScript class. And by defining it inside of our JavaScript class, this gives us a way to kind of build the form however we want. And what I mean by this is, let's say we have a giant complicated form that comes back from an API call. We can build it by doing an API call here, create API call, and then using that response from the API call to create the form based on API fields. And that's kind of one way you would use the reactive way. Since we don't have anything that complex, we just have a couple input fields and a submit button. We're gonna do things the template driven way where you build out your form inside of your template. And this is very similar to the Angular JS, Angular 1.x way, if you're used to that. So we'll do that. And to get a little bit of spacing with a Bulma class, we're gonna say div class field. Uh-oh, they don't have divs down here. And then in here, we're going to say input type is text, name is name, class is input, and that's a Bulma class to get a little bit of styling there. And let's save that. Cool, so that's our name. Let's give a label here. Okay. And I believe this also needs a class of label. There you go. Now let's take these both, copy it down here into email field. The type is email and the name is gonna be email. Oh, and this also should say email. And for this message, we're gonna use the label as well. But instead of the input, we're gonna say text area, name is message, class is text area, and that is our text area. 
And finally, for the submit button, button type is submit. Class is button is large is, uh, let's go with warning for a yellow. Contact or send. Let's do send. All right, so we have our contact form and a little bit of Bowman classes, but now we have a good looking contact form. And so far we've done zero Angular work. This is all HTML, right? All just good old HTML elements and HTML CSS classes. Now to start working with Angular's forms, we have to tell Angular that we want to use its forms library. So let's go into app module where we register everything. And under imports is where we're going to add the forms module. Now, the way we import the forms module, let's go up here and underneath the ng module, we'll say import forms module from Angular slash forms. Now, Angular knows, oh, hey, we want to use the forms module. Let's bring that into our project. So we'll copy this and tell Angular, hey, we want to bring it in and use it. And we'll throw that in imports because that's where modules go is imports. Okay, so that's all we need to do to tell Angular we want to use the forms module. Now that we have the forms module, let's tell Angular to bind each of these inputs to an actual variable. So I want to take a step back. Let's say we were processing this form with vanilla JavaScript or jQuery. In here, if we wanted to do a submit form, we would have to grab all the fields and their values, right? So you'd have to say const name input is equal to document.query selector, input where name is equal to name, or something like that. And then you would say name input, oh, sorry, you would pull the value out of this. And then you would kind of do that for each one, right? Well, Angular doesn't really need us to do all of this grabbing and pulling from the template. The template is bound to this class. And by doing that, all we have to do is say, okay, well, the variables that exist here are name, email, and message. And by binding these properties to this class, Angular knows that we have these three variables available. Now we just need to tell Angular, hey, okay, name is going to apply to this input. And we're going to use what's called the banana in the box. So this is a property binding, and this is also an event binding. And uh, let's say ng model is equal to name. Now I know we haven't touched on templates uh, too much yet for property bindings and event bindings, but this is the way that we're going to two-way data bind this variable to our class. And when I say two-way data bind, that means that the variable here is going to get put into the template. And then if it changes in our template, it gets bound to the class. So it goes two ways, right? It goes from the class to the template, template to the class. And if you're familiar with AngularJS, that's the equivalent of ng-model, although it is way more performant in Angular 2, version 2 and up. So we have bound this. So let's make sure our two-way data binding works up here. Let's say name, and this is the way we take variables and throw it into our template is double brackets. So we'll save that. Let's take a look at our template. And notice as I type, it automatically updates this name variable. So it's bound to our class, and then our class binds it to this interpolation variable here which is a fancy word for just saying inject this variable into this section because there's double brackets and that's how Angular knows where to inject. All right, so we have ng model name and what's cool too is let's say we refresh this and I told you it was two-way data bound. So if we change it here, name is equal to Chris, it should automatically update the template, which it does. As soon as I saved, since it's bound here, it gets bound to the template. All right, well, let's take this out. And then I'm also going to use a little bit of TypeScript magic here, and we're going to say these are all strings. And that's just helpful so that when we visit this component, we can say, okay, well, the three things we need are name, email, and message, and they're all going to be strings. Self-documenting code is very important. 
And let's two-way data bind these two. ng model is equal to email. And let's do the same for message. Now we need to listen for the form's submit event so that we can process this form. We're going to say ng submit is equal to submit form. Now you might be wondering about these parentheses and these brackets inside of our HTML attributes. These are completely valid HTML. This is the way that Angular listens for events and declaratively binds event listeners to our HTML. So let's delete that. And what we're saying is when this form gets submitted, use the method on our class called submit form. So we'll go down here, submit form. Let's make sure it works. Alert, I am submitting the form. Okay, so let's go over here. We'll click send. And now I am submitting the form works. So we've automatically bound that event to this HTML. I know that was a lot to think about, but really what we've done here is let's zoom out. We have created a template. That's probably way too small. <laughs> so we've created a template, right? And since it's a component, it's bound to this JavaScript class, ES6 class. And we have name, email, message, which is the way we define variables and properties on ES6 classes. We just throw it at the top of it. And then in our template, we bound it to our three inputs. And then we're also binding an event, a method to an actual event. So you can see how these components, right? The template is very directly bound to the class that it's attached to. Again, components make things very, very easy to maneuver around because everything is so tightly bound together. Template, styles, and class are all one component. Let's take this one step further inside of this alert. I want to say const message is equal to, and I'm going to use ES6 template backticks, and this is so we can do a template string. My name is, and I want to show off my name that's in this name variable. So how do we do that? Well, we're using an ES6 class, so we can say dollar sign, and this is how you bind variables into a template string for ES6. You can say this dot name. So save that. Over here, let's update my name, Chris, and then I'll click Submit. I'm submitting the form. Oh, that's because we didn't alert the actual message. There we go. Chris, send, my name is Chris. Okay, and let's do a little bit further. My email is this.email, my message, is this dot message. Try that again with some random text, send, and now we have our data bound name, email, and message. And this is how you would submit a form using Angular, right? You would have properties and then you would have a method to submit the form. And then you would just do your API call or HTTP call, wherever you want to send your form content to. And the cool thing is we have access to these properties thanks to this dot, because we're referencing the class and the property on that class, which is this. All right, that was a good crash course into forms and how Angular kind of binds data into its templates. Let's move forward a little bit more and let's do some validation on the form.